As a hardcore gold prospecting enthusiast, I thought I'd spend the week reliving my 1850s dream, using a rocker box to extract gold. Until I realised back then, you can still get away with murder. <laughs> I've really made him angry. I've really made him angry. Because this is the song that never ends. <laughs> ah! <laughs> So what happened last night was I got sent a rocker box video. So what are we doing today? Rocker boxes. Yeah. Rocker boxes like this one were the 1800s answer to high bankers today. You needed no running water to operate them. They have a classifying system. And underneath that classifying system is what's called an apron that catches your gold primarily before the rest of the dirt travels down a sluice run that only gets cleaned out every so often. And these little tools were an absolute game changer on the gold fields, especially in places that had limited water. The operation of a rocker box is super simple. You put a scoop of dirt in the top hopper. You fill your ladle with water. You pour the water over the dirt in your hopper whilst rocking the cradle. The rocking action helps settle all the gold into the matting and the water washes away all the light material. There is a reason my second channel is called Spun Engineering. I give to you my ladle. <laughs> Crafted with the finest electrical tape. You can get yours now on my website for only $199.99. I did some test panning at the start of the week and I actually found this section to be quite rich. Wow, that black sand is coarse. Look at the gold. Every pan from the lower end of that gutter is loaded. And because there's not a lot of gravel here and I want to have some fun with the rocker box, I thought it'd be the perfect opportunity to process it. Un scoop of dirt. All right, prediction, how many? Four. Abracadabra, five. Oh. And nothing. Five is Latin for zero. A.W. Suscunt. <laughs> oh God, oh God, oh God. <sighs> Gadzi, I got, I got that stool sample for you. <laughs> Oh, I'll take it to the lab right now. <laughs> oh, you got stool on your hands. Yeah. Nah, it's not, mate. For the super authentic feel, I'm using a steel gold pan today. And I kind of want to know how well, if at all, this apron is doing at catching gold because I've never used one in the rocker box before. We haven't run heaps of dirt, only about 10 or so hoppers full. I have to re-season this pan because of the rust in the bottom, but we can see the black sand and we've got a fair amount of it. That apron seems to be catching heavy. The question is though, is it catching any golds? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's gold in that. Yeah. Clearly that is not a lot of gold, but it's some. There's about 20 or so little tiny pieces in there, but it's catching really fine stuff. So that's good. Literally first hopper full of rocks that I put in. Now I can align my chakras. Woo! Yeah! Oh. oh! I'm not usually the one that ends up finding the chakra aligners. That looks like a smoky quartz to me. That is pretty cool. That is going to go on the tumbler. For those of you wondering about the chronology of this video, it's still winter and it's hot enough to have to bring out my smog. Hmm. Slight problem, I took a test pan out of this hole. The gold on top was great. The gold down the bottom, not so good. But I also know that all this really shallow bedrock here is covered in about 20 specks of pan dirt. So we're just gonna scrape all of this up. Lira Jenkins. Now we're bucker rocks and feel my processing power.
I was really hoping that the gravel over there was going to have a lot more gold in it than it ended up having. So we scraped the surface of the bedrock where there was some concentrated pockets of gold. And now that they're all run through, it's time to clean out. There's no point continuing processing dirt that doesn't have too much gold in it. Rocker boxes, you really want to be running some dirt that has a decent spec count in it to add up to anything. This still has our 20 or so little specks from the last clean out I did. Hopefully we've added a few more. Oh, I'll put a little bit of clean water in it so we can actually see what we're doing. And remembering that this is only that top apron. Did we catch a shot? We caught a shotgun pellet. Hey, we've been prospecting. Oh yeah. Oh, that's a way better pan. We did manage to get some nice looking pieces from that top apron. I love panning in scum water. It's so therapeutically good for your soul. Everything takes that little bit longer when you're using a steel pan. <laughs> it's steady as she goes. Again, steel pan, rocker box, you're an enthusiast. You're definitely not out here to process a whole bunch of material. I didn't run that much. Maybe, I don't know, four buckets worth of dirt. And hopefully, we got rewarded with some gold. We did. Look at that. Man, that stuff is fine. <laughs> Gadzi, is that a lot of gold? No. Oh, me. Ah. And then the rains came. A lot of rain. Finally got using the rocker box out of my system. And today I was going to go to a new spot where I was finding coarse chunky gold, but alas, it's thunderstorming. Therefore, today we shall make jerky. Back in the day, it was all about preserving the meat so people could have some form of protein on long journeys. Or preserving game they killed in areas where the food could spoil. I'll be using a boneless leg roast and we're going to pop that in the freezer to make it easier to cut. First, we have to actually create the marinade. This is what I'll be using. And you're going to need about this much of all of them. The whole purpose of jerky is to preserve the meat. That means you've got to make it as inhospitable to bacteria as humanly possible, and your marinade is part of that. Things like salt kill the heck out of bacteria. You really want nitrate-loaded salts because nitrates kill bacteria in the long run. But regular salt will do fine for short-term jerky. This jerky is not going to last more than a couple of days because I'm going to eat it vigorously. Whisk. You're going to want to get your sharpest knife. Now, this should have been in your freezer for an hour or so. It makes it a little bit easier to cut. I will be wearing gloves simply to help cut down on bacteria. We will not be needing any of that. Fat is the killer of jerky. It can go rancid really quickly, so we want to remove as much of this as possible. Some of it's going to pull off, some of it's going to cut off. Uh, take your time to trim it down. It is easier if you just buy a leaner cut of meat. Uh, but I didn't because I'm an idiot. When it comes to actually cutting your beef jerky strips, you want them about a quarter of an inch or maybe half a centimetre thick, and that is going to allow them to dry evenly. So you want to try to make those cuts as even as possible. Now that you've got a beautiful pile of raw looking meat, put that in that for hours. Swishy, 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 swishy. So because we're adults on this channel, we're going to add some liquid bread to the marinade as well. Just a dash. A few hours later. Clearly Fern gives her approval. While that marinades, I have been busy preparing the drying trays. You can pick trays up like this at supermarkets at $2 shops for barely any money at all. And you don't even need these. You can literally just use skewers and put three or four pieces of meat on one skewer so they're dangling lengthwise and then you can hang them in your oven. When it comes to temperature to dry your jerky, critical you do two things. The first is that most bacteria, if it's going to be on your meat, is going to be on the outside of the meat and therefore you want to flash cook it. So we're going to preheat this bad boy to about 200 centigrade and put all of our jerky in there for about 10 minutes at that temperature. Then we're going to drop our temperature to just under 100 degrees around 80 degrees centigrade which is about here on my oven 
temperature right back down to about there. Crack the door so the steam can come out. And in a few hours, that is gonna be delicious jerky. It's been in the oven for four and a half hours. This is one of the thicker bits, but there's still definitely a little bit more to go. And I just wanna show you, we are getting close. If you break it, you can start seeing some of the fibers in there. It took six hours to cure the beef to jerky. And yes, it's delicious. Before packing it in my spindle and heading to the creek for more rocker boxing. The jerky took about six hours to dry, but more on that later because um, the rocker box fever hit again. Now I know I said I was going to dry wash this in the summer because there is ridiculously good gold in that gutter over there. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> but like there's water and I kind of wanted to show you guys what a rocker box can do when you're on good gold. Kind of wanted to try having a um, brown dog for a while. Isn't that right, Fern? And just for reference, that is the type of gold we're going to be running through that rocker box today. That is unpan. So all of this deliciousness is going into those mm -hmm. ugly buckets. Yeah, baby. <laughs> 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 have you ever been slapped with a gum tree? Because I have. This is the way we scrape the bush, scrape the bush, scrape the bush. The gold of the drift mines is not deep. It's literally stuck to the clay. So you only have to scrape up the top surface to collect your pay dirt. Yeet! And whilst there is enough water to use a high banker, using a rocker box makes me feel good and warm in my tummy. gold cradle easier than panning? No. But is it faster? That's debatable. The advantage that this gives you is that you don't have to physically work the whole time you're using it. It's sort of like a high banker. You can start and you can stop and you can go at your own leisure and you don't have to clean anything out until much later. Which means throughout an entire day, you get more done. But does it make you feel like an old timer? Yes. By the end of the day, your back will be sore and you will be thinking you are 400 years old. About 70% of the gold I found gets caught in that top apron. So we're gonna clean that out. We've done three buckets. How's that um, support brace you got going on? That was good. Uh, we've only run three buckets. I don't know how much gold to expect, but I'd like to see at least, I don't know, five specks. Can already see a couple of little pieces coming out, which is nice. And here we go. Remember it's the top apron. So it's not everything we've got. But it is looking pretty good. I can see gold all over that edge. Oh yeah, for three buckets. Three buckets, just the top apron. We are gonna have a good day being old timers, Mick. Old timers rock. We're gonna be able to afford possibly some prostitutes and an egg. <laughs> for those of you who don't know about eggs on the gold field, they were prized possessions. You could pay up to $4, which was an ounce of gold for an egg on the gold fields. And basically they ate all of the birds and that's why they were so expensive. For now, Mick and I are just gonna celebrate off our cheap ass jerky, our burnt jerky. Jerky box. This main trench is done. We got that done in about three buckets. Right next door, there is a nice little gutter. We're gonna scrape this up and get gold out of this. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, this is um so dry and nice to walk in. Splendor in the mud. Splendor in the mud. Now I've been given a lot of tips on how I could make a rocker box more efficient and practical to use, such as adding a foot pump to the top hopper so you don't have to manually ladle water in. But that's not the point of rocker boxing. If I was going to do that, I'd just bring out a high banker. Rocker boxing for me is about participating in the hobby, feeling what it felt like to be on the gold fields back in 1850. And I don't mind doing a little bit of hard work to achieve that. I'm going to repeat what I just said for dramatic effect. Get f I forgot that we brought the leprechaun out. And because we brought the leprechaun out, he's like, oh, we should check that spot. So we checked that spot and... Lordy, lordy. Oh, you're a dirty girl. That's like the best pan I've seen from this spot. 
that's at least five specs minimum. Two nanos. That is a pocket of Cassiterite. Wow. Three buckets later, and we're going to do the top apron again. We're not going to clean out the main mat until we're finished. Splendor in the mud. Splendor in the mud. These buckets weren't from as rich of an area. They were mostly the sloppy overburden, which has a little bit of gold in it. So it'll be interesting to see how much we get. I don't believe it's going to be as rich because, as I said, it was sloppy overburden. But maybe, maybe we've got a whole lot of black sand. <laughs> Gold. Yeah. Yeah. Not as much, like I said, but still not bad. If we can get down to the gravel layer, we're going to see a lot more specs than that from three buckets. So because the weather is being really temperamental, it's like hot and then it's really cold and then it's raining and then it's not raining and everything is sloppy. And I have old man back and Mick has old man back. These are going to be our last three buckets, but we're coming back here with dry washers and other things anyways. Don't worry. Took a little sneaky pan out of this very tiny erosion gutter here. One scoop, 20 specks of gold. Three buckets from that, that should add up pretty quick. What do you reckon, dingbat? These three buckets would take us up to nine buckets total or 180 litres of pay dirt. That is a very small parcel of soil for modern standards. it loses gold and it's kind of slow and clunky but by god is it fun for the authentic feel we'll break out the steel pan for the apron slightly cleaner water Well, the apron is looking good. That is some coarse tin. It looked promising, that gutter. So I'm going to hold out hope that we're going to get a nice smile of gold, especially with the size of the black sand that's in there. Then we're going to clean out the main mat. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Three buckets. That's pretty good. Three little buckets. Beautiful. But we've done nine buckets total, and we haven't cleaned out the main mat once. So I want to know how much gold's in that. I've only lightly washed off the mat into the pan and then I stuck it in the red bucket over there because we're going to beat the bejesus out of it. There can't be any more Jesus left in that mat when we're finished. Nah. <laughs> oh yeah, it's so there, bud. <laughs> yeah, it's stuck there. Oh, before. come on. Boot stuck. There we go. Oh, not the other one. <laughs> ah. Ah. I know we're going to see gold in this. I don't know how good it's going to be because usually the apron does catch most of it. And it's just solid black sand. This isn't even all of it. This is just a very light wash out of the mat. There's going to be more. I am not confident I'm going to be able to get this down any further without losing significant amounts of gold. So we're going to take all this home and process it where I know I can't lose any. But we're going to try, try to have a sneaky peek in this mat. <laughs> Make it smile. Oh man, it's um, not gonna happen because the black sand's too thick, but we got gold. <laughs> All through the black sand. So we're gonna have to use a cleanup sluice at home to get all of this gold out, but look at it. Look at it. Everywhere. This is the gold that we sucked up just from that top apron. 
That is looking really good. I think we are gonna have a fantastic cleanup. Even though we just spent the last couple of days in the 1850s, we're gonna bring it up to 2022 and use a modern sluice box to clean up our concentrates. I've run our concentrates through a series of classifiers. This is under 50 mesh, this is 30 mesh, and this is everything over 30 mesh. We classify our material down to different sizes so that very small gold doesn't have to compete with very large pieces of black sand for space in the sluice box. For those who wanna know, I'm using a gold rack cleanup sluice, running Dream Matte Micro cell matting, a Washington Beach Mining speed controller, an 18 amp hour battery, and an 1100 gallon an hour pump. To be or not to be? That is the question. I've done a thing here called preloading the bed. That means that I've got black sand in there from a previous cleanup. Black sand is actually your friend when it comes to cleanups because it creates friction. And friction is what helps keep all the gold in your sluice box. All right, we're just gonna do these concentrates one handful at a time. This is most of the 50 mesh gold run through. It's the hardest gold to catch in this system. You can see we've got a whole bunch of it there. Super fine stuff. The sluice mat is looking real healthy. I am loving the gold that is in that. We've got through the 50 mesh, we've got through the 30 mesh, and we are seeing cells full of that yellow gold. This oversized stuff is much too big for those fine riffles, so we're gonna pan it. Black sand when it's over 30 mesh in size is very easy to pan off. So I prefer to do this and run it through a sluice box. And we can see we actually got some real nice coarse pieces of gold out of that trench. Ferriti Creek, they're pretty good. Would you just look at that? Who did these up so tight? Normally, I would use a miller table to finish this off. I'd take it inside, it'd take me 10 or 15 minutes. But today, I am going to pan it down by hand. That's gonna take a little bit of time. So, I'll be back with you when we have clean gold. What well, feels like 10 years later. That's not a bad take. I'm gonna guess maybe half a gram, three quarters of a gram. Who says you need the most modern equipment to find gold? While our little smelter is preheating, this is our gold all dried up, and I cannot wait to melt that into a little button. How much do you reckon there? Because I'm only doing very small amounts of gold, and I do not have a very small mold, we're gonna end up with a blob of gold. Some people were telling me that I could tip my mold on the corner and then pour the gold into it, but I just don't get enough working time with the metal before it cools. And I'm just not that accurate. You know it's about ready when you get that beautiful orange dancing flame at the top. This is the real moment of tooth. You gotta grab the thing and then you gotta go, oh, bloop. oh fell out, woo, bubbles. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> what a guess. That is our gold. Look, it's not much, but it's an honest day's work. It is amazing how much gold compacts in size when you melt it. It looks like a whole bunch of gold in the pan, then you melt it down to this, and it looks like nothing. But I guarantee you, it'll weigh up nice. But for now, my security team and I are gonna weigh up our little ball of gold. I'm expecting this to be about half a gram. Leave your guess below. Oh, nice, 0.423. That is worth $34.19 Australian at the time of recording. Until next time, please give your dog a big scratch behind the ears for me. Peace, and I'm gonna go pour that again.